Okay, so I'm going to have a look at some questions for the uh, calculus option. Uh, these ones are to do with uh, like using Riemann sums and kind of areas underneath the uh, curves. Okay, so here's my first question. Um, I'm, I'm skipping parts A and B because they're not directly related to the to the Riemann sum itself. Um, so here we go. So the diagram below shows the graph of uh, y equals one over x squared. Okay, and so this shade a suitable region on the diagram below to show that the sum from n equals 1 to k of 1 over n squared plus the integral from k plus 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared is less than l. And l, they've told us, is the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Okay, so there's quite a lot going on in this question. Um, even though it's only worth, I think, three marks, there's still quite a lot that we need to think about. Um, my first step, I would actually write this down because I mean I know they've told us L and this is what L is, but kind of put it all in one go so it's kind of a bit easier to see what it is we're trying to work out. And then once you've got this situation, uh, the case really is to kind of see well what do each of these things mean, and then see if you can show kind of geometrically why this is correct, why this thing plus this thing is is less than this thing. So let's start. Um, with the integral from k plus 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared. Remember, this is the, the line 1 over x squared. So I'll just shade it in here. This is the integral from k infinity of 1 over x squared. So that's this bit I've accounted for, that bit in the middle. I then want to see, well, what is this bit here going to account for the n equals 1 to k of 1 over n squared? Okay, so let's see what that's going to look like. Well, I can do that by drawing some uh, rectangles basically. So here when I've got x equals 1, well that is going to give me a y value of 1 over 1 squared and then the, the height of the rectangle is 1. So I'm going to have a height of 1, sorry, a width of 1 times by the height which is 1 over 1 squared which is this thing here. And then this rectangle here is going to be, well, the width is still 1 the height now, will, when x is 2, this value here is 1 over 2 squared. Okay, and then I can basically build my rectangles like this. So these rectangles all the way up to this rectangle here is going to be, in effect, 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared all the way to 1 over k squared. So I've now represented the, the left-hand side of my inequality. So it's this kind of shaded color plus this shaded color. All I now need to do is to, to show that this is left less than the limit. Now the limit is the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Okay, so I'm going to try and represent that on the graph now. Um, now, the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, well, I'm still going to get all of these rectangles here and all these rectangles here. But the only difference is I also have these rectangles, <clears throat> excuse me, all these rectangles as well, and these kind of carry on and carry on and carry on. Now, as you can see, these little red bits here are the bits that are not accounted for in the left-hand side uh, calculation that I've got. Okay, so 1 over n squared from 1 to k gave me these kind of purple ones. The integral gave me this kind of light blue one but I've kind of missed out this like little region here that would be incorporated in the in this. So therefore, um, it must be must be less than. Okay, so that's the sort of thing you're going to have to do for that question. Um, for the second bit, we need to do the the same the same kind of idea, um, and this time we need to show that the limit. Uh, is less than from n equals 1 to k of 1 over n squared plus from k to infinity of 1 over x squared. So pretty similar to the last question. I'm going to shade it like this. Um, so once again, this is this is 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared. This represents these regions here. But this time I'm going all the way all the way to, to 1 over k squared. So I'm going to finish with this this rectangle here. And then I'm still going from k to infinity, and then I shade in this bit here for my integral. Now, as you can notice, is that I've actually double counted 
this kind of region underneath here two times because I've counted it once when I'm doing the summation of the rectangles and I'm also counting it when I'm looking at the integral so this bit underneath the curve of that rectangle I'm counting two times okay and that's the important bit because if I if I try it again just to, to draw all my rectangles so this is just a sum of basically all these rectangles I will notice that yeah there's I'm missing out this kind of little extra bits here and here but those little areas are going to be less than that all this double counted area here so this is a greater area than these little areas therefore um, we're going to have this this thing on the right hand side that area in effect is going to be greater than the area on the left hand side okay um, and this question continues a little bit and it does hence show that n equals 1 to k 1 over n squared plus 1 over k plus 1 is less than the limit and that's less than n equals 1 to k 1 over n squared plus 1 over k um, just to bring up at this point this is the, the part that we skipped but this is kind of a useful bit of information we, we showed in the first part we would have showed in the first part that from um, a to infinity of 1 over x squared dx is equal to 1 over a okay, and you, you can show that relatively easily so we're actually going to use that result um, and as long as we do use that result it's, it's simply a case of uh, going back to the previous question we've just shown these two bits of information here we've shown the limit is less than all this thing and the limit is greater than all this thing so all we need to do is basically use that this result here to say well k plus 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared gives me 1 over k plus 1 and the integral of this thing gives me 1 over k uh, and that's it so for, for this I, get, I think it's 3 marks all you need to remember really is to, to use the information that you'd worked out previously and then to, to kind of follow through with your previous step in parts B and C which find out what these limits were okay so there we go so that was part D and then part E E again worth three marks um, and it basically says using k equals 4 find the upper bound and lower bound for L blah 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 and then to find an upper, upper and lower bound for pi and it says well we're given that L equals pi squared over 6 it's a very interesting part of the question because on the examiner report uh, it basically says, if we've got it at the bottom, here we go, um, even though part E could be done without using any of the previous parts of the questions, many students were simply put off and only a minority tried it. So it's quite interesting to, to note this for, in terms of exam technique. This is worth three marks. You didn't need to do anything else in the previous parts of the questions to still be able to get these three marks. But because it's part E, People kind of give up and think, well, I've, I didn't manage to do the other bit. I can't do this bit. So kind of really read the question quite carefully. So all I need to do for this is really just put k equals 4 into my formula and to replace L with pi squared over 6. It's actually a very, very easy question. So there we go. I've just, I just replaced k with 4. I've replaced k with 4. And I get this thing here. And there we go. k is replaced with 4. And then I just need to remember that sigma n equals 1 to 4 of 1 over n squared. That just means 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared, etc., etc. And so I can just rewrite it like that. Again, I've not done anything especially complicated. I've just expanded or kind of worked out this sigma. And I've still got it from this side and this side. And that's it, really. Um, so I can just rearrange it. So times both sides by 6 and then square root. And I get pi between 3.12 and 3.17. Okay, so this, this, all this needed really is substitution. But as the examiner said, uh, only a minority of students, a very, very few students, even tried this question, even though like, absolutely everyone would have been able to do it. Okay, so that's the first question. Um, let's look at another one. Uh, this is pretty similar, same sort of idea. So we want to use the diagram to show that 1 over 4 cubed plus 1 over 5 cubed plus 1 over 6 cubed dot 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 is less than the integral from 3 to infinity of 1 over x cubed and that is less than 1 over 3 cubed plus 1 over 4 cubed plus 1 over 5 cubed. And we're given the graph of 1 over uh, x cubed. Okay, so the same idea as before. I'm going to start off by shading some information 
Well, these little rectangles here, you can see where the height is. So this is going to be a height, this point here. Well, when x is 4, the height is going to be y equals 1 over 4 cubed. So the height here must be 1 over 4 uh, sorry, cubed rather than squared. Just amend that. So we've got 4 cubed, 5 cubed, and 3 cubed. Uh, excuse me on that one. Um, so I know that this bit here is, is 1 over 5 cubed plus 1 over... 1 over 4 cubed, 1 over 5 cubed, plus 1 over 6 cubed. Yeah, I've done it on this one as well. Uh, and then I can work out the, the purple areas. Now the purple areas, um, I'm taking the bound from this one. So this is when, so when x is 3, this is going to give me a y value of 1 over 3 cubed. Okay, and so therefore, because the height is, the, the width is 1, Again, I can work out the, the area of this rectangle. Okay, so I now know that the purple area uh, represents this sum here, and I know that the blue rectangle, blue rectangles were representing this sum here, and they kind of sandwich between. We can see that the, the purple one is too big for the integral of the curve, and the blue one was too small for the integral of the curve. And that's basically what this was saying here, wasn't it? It was saying that, that this one was less than and this one was greater than. And that's it, really. We've, we've shown that the integral of the curve is, is sandwiched between those two, those two areas there. OK, and then one last question. Uh, this time we've, we've got the graph of 1 over x. We've got some line segments. By considering the areas of appropriate rectangles, we want to show this kind of inequality holds. Okay, and again, we're given uh, some rectangles and a curve, so very, very similar sorts of questions once you've seen a few of them. Okay, and we do pretty much the same as that last question. So I can work out the areas of these rectangles. Well, this, these two rectangles here, they've got a, a width of one. This one here, I'm measuring at this point here, so it's going to, when x is a, I'm going to get a y value of 1 over a, so this is going to be the area, and then this is going to be the area of the next one. And then, same as before, I can do the purple one, so again, the, the width is 1, and this time I'm measuring from, th from this point in the x, so this tells me that the y value is 1 over a minus 1, so again, this is the purple areas of the rectangles. And then I can basically look at the integral, so that's the area underneath the curve. Okay, so the area underneath the curve. Now, in particular, I'm just going to limit my, my integral, so between a minus 1 and a plus 1. So I'm just going to look at, in particular, this area, this area here. Okay, and you can see that, well, the, the blue shaded region that I did previously, which was those two little rectangles gave me an area that was smaller than this, this red region here. And equally, the purple bit, which was including those rectangles, gave me an area that was bigger. Okay, so same as before, really, the same sort of question. So I've got this. I, I know that this, the, the blue region was like a lower bound, the purple region was an upper bound, and then kind of well, the bit that I kind of shaded in red was like the middle, the middle part. Okay, and then I just basically put that into, into uh, an inequality. So the addition of those two was less than the integral of this thing, which was less than the addition of those two, those two rectangles. Okay, so I then just simplify. So I can simplify this to be a plus 1 plus a all over a bracket a plus 1. I can integrate this function, so I get ln a plus 1 minus ln a minus 1, and that is less than this thing here. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Once I've got that step, all I need to do is just rearrange it so I can use the laws of logs. I take away, it's the same as dividing, and I just factorize and just simplify, and I get that. So there we go. So I've, I've shown that 2a plus 1 over a bracket a plus 1 is less than this, 
is less than this thing here. So same method as before. Okay, and once again, uh, we have um, we have uh, lower and upper bound for LUN of uh, 1.2. Same as before, we can actually do this whole question without actually um, without really having to do do any real kind of difficult maths. We just need to find out basically. Well, this this thing here needs to be 1.2. So I need to basically work out what value of A is going to give me an answer of 1.2. So that's why I'm going to set up as my equation. So I want this to be 1.2. If I rearrange that, I find out that A is equal to 11. So when A is 11, this will give me a bracket inside here of 1.2. So that's it. I, I just basically put that one uh, answer of 11 in the left hand side, put that answer of 11 into the right hand side. And if I do that, there we go, I get kind of a lower bound and an upper bound for LUN 1.2.